Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, really appreciate. Yeah, my own mic this time. <laughs> Thank you. We're getting quite some examples of what people are doing. Eh? It's it's uh, very cool. So, Pauline, while I speak, would you mind coming up? Uh, there's a mic here. Um, we're getting your slide up. So. Um, the clicker. Somebody stole it. I don't have it. It's over there. Well, probably I took it over there. That was probably me. That's a good point. Okay. Clicker is here. Thank you. Slides are there. And Pauline is here. What else could we ask for? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sandra. And thank you, everyone, for being here. It's, it's wonderful for me to come into this community because coming from Microsoft, so I'm a representative of Microsoft. I do government industry solutions here in Ottawa focused on federal government trying to help empower them, help them understand how to innovate public service, innovate public safety, and do some different things, try some new things. And so my role in coming here, for one thing, I'm learning a ton, which I love to do, and you'll see why that's important in terms of my, my, our Microsoft culture. Um, but I want to share some of the inside one of the biggest uh, tech organizations on the planet where innovation is everything. They don't respect that we've been around since 1975. They respect what we've done today. What innovation are we bringing to the community? And so that's what I want to talk to you about today. And I'm going to talk to you in three pieces of it. To start off, this is our corporate mission, to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. Now, by nature of that mission itself, that is incredibly inclusive. It means we need to consider every person and every organization and understand what they're trying to achieve so that we can help them do that. I'm going to talk in three sections here. First of all, Microsoft is an innovator. How do we drive our own innovation and what role does inclusiveness and diversity play in that aspect? The second piece is Microsoft is a platform for innovation. How do we platform for others to innovate in an inclusive way? And the third piece is an enabler and you'll hear some familiar stories from our first section and the second section in terms of how learning plays a role and readiness to innovate. So let's take a look at Microsoft's culture. We decided about five years ago we needed to transform. I'm going to move this because I'm, I'm a better moving speaker. Um, I think it's a height thing too. <laughs> so we determined that if we were going to be innovative, we needed to be inclusive. We needed to collaborate. There needed to be a really diverse set of minds around these problems that we were trying to solve for. And we start with the idea of a growth mindset. So Professor Carol Dweck had produced a book several years back around growth mindset. What it means essentially, a growth mindset comes from a place of learning. It means that people's capabilities and our potential are not limited by how we are born. It means that you can learn and grow and change and understand others in new ways. And you can change your opinion. And that is at the basis, even of our hiring. We're looking to hire people with a growth mindset. You'll see on the left-hand side, there are three spheres. This is how we measure people. Throughout the entire organization, there are three ways we are measured. First of all is what do we do on our own? to bring the organization forward? What have we personally contributed? But the other two spheres, which makes up two thirds of how we're measured as a Microsoft employee, what have we taken from someone else's innovation and built upon? And what have others taken from our ideas and built upon? So you can see that just by nature of how we're measured, we are focused on innovating and working with new people and driving collaboration across different parts of the organization Different silos, not always easy to do among strong-minded and a large organization, but we are doing this, and I can tell you as an employee of Microsoft, only for two years, I notice a difference. I feel this when I walk into a room. Sometimes we all sit back and go, wow, you know what? If we hadn't had that mix of people in a meeting room, which was not typical for us, we wouldn't have come up with the next, that next big idea or that next big opportunity. There's a link here, I won't play it, but it's a video that talks to growth mindset where you can assess yourself and where are you on that above the line, below the line. Am I open to inclusive innovation? Essentially, it's an openness. So let's talk about how we innovate. We look at four areas and it's a 12, we put $12 billion into innovation every year. Bold, regardless of size. Inclusive and optimistic. These are the areas where we're investing, we're encouraging our organization to innovate, grounded in trust and executed at scale. 
And why does this make a difference? Because we're not trying to design for all of us, we're trying to design for each of us. Goes right back to the corporate mission. This accessible controller, this is an Xbox accessible controller, was created in one week by a group of people, some of which were Microsoft, some of which were third party community members, people with disabilities, looking to engage all in the gaming industry. And this was produced in a one-week hackathon where Microsoft employees and others are brought together, irrespective of your role. You don't need to be a technical contributor to play a part in these hackathons. You just need to have an idea. Get the group together, and this is what was created. Next, let's talk about Microsoft's platform for inclusive innovation. So artificial intelligence. A big piece of the puzzle, we talk about it as augmenting human capability. We're not talking about it as a replacement for humans, we're talking about it augmenting, scaling human ingenuity. These four areas, very large societal challenges. And we recognize that artificial intelligence has a role to play here, to help humans solve big problems. We also recognize that there's no one company on the planet or one person on the planet who's going to be able to solve for these issues. And so what we've done is we've invested significant dollars, about 165 million across four of these challenges. The AI for Accessibility is a grant program that provides cloud credits as well as technical expertise and startup innovation assistance to focus on the challenges for accessibility through technology, through leveraging artificial intelligence. AI for Earth addresses those climate change issues and agriculture issues, challenges of feeding the world, challenges that we cannot, any individual again, solve for ourselves. But we're working with academia, we're working with public citizens, and we're working with other tech companies, and we're working with indigenous people as well to solve for these. One of the, actually I was thinking, Elder Prudhomme, when we were talking earlier, the idea of Indigenous engagement and expanding Indigenous knowledge, as we've, we've done in Australia, we've taken the knowledge of the Indigenous people and extended it through artificial intelligence to share it across scientific communities to help preserve wildlife and help preserve the land. So again, extending the power of human ingenuity. The idea of AI for humanitarian action takes focus on child welfare, it takes focus on refugees, and how can we help with new ideas and artificial intelligence to support AI for cultural heritage, language preservation, sharing and showcasing worlds that perhaps could be challenged over time if we don't attach ourselves and protect them through artificial intelligence and other innovation. And we've launched a fifth category just uh, last month, which is AI for health. So again, Big societal challenges are going to take the minds of all, and that's why it's so important that we be inclusive in these innovation programs and we look to do more. And it's not just a Microsoft thing. The tech industry in general has focused on these areas, and you're starting to see more, more focus of our solid investment across the board to help with these issues. And then the third section that I wanted to address is skilling. Because the only way we can truly be inclusive in our innovation is to ensure, from a digital perspective, that communities who are underrepresented, communities who may have not had the opportunities that we've had to learn, are able to participate. And so skilling drives a really large piece of that to allow all of our diverse society to participate in these new innovations. So in Canada here, we are partnering with organizations such as University of Ottawa and others. We are partnering in labs. We are providing research partnerships across the board, but we're also prioritizing underserved communities and educating in partnership with a large number of lower schools, um, you know, K to eight. And we get out there, we are given um, volunteer hours as a corporation as well, which we love to do and get out into the community to help with the skilling programs. We also highlight that a lot of this you can do on your own. These are all free learning programs. And you'll get a copy of the slides as well. So artificial intelligence school, IoT school, um, the Microsoft training days come through and they're available to everyone in cities across Canada. This, when I look at um, you know, the challenges that university represents for some communities, these are other ways we can help upskill Canada. There's going to be a big gap in terms of digital capability. And if you 
talk about the term micro-credentialing, picking up those skills that are really needed, those gaps in the Canadian workforce where you can start something in a very small way and become very, very employable quickly. Something like artificial intelligence, IoT, cloud engagement, all of those training available online and in person can be very compelling in small ways that start to launch us to be more inclusive. And I will leave it at that. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Pauline. That was uh, uh, very, very cool. Um, do we have questions for, for this panel? And Venus is, is here, I'm pretty sure.